The aerial refueling system of the GV-1 aircraft provides for the refueling of suitably equipped airplanes singularly or in pairs at altitudes up to 25,000 feet. In creating the fuel capacity for the aerial refueling system, the regular wing fuel tanks and flow system have been integrated with a 3,600 gallon capacity fuselage tank. Fuel is pumped from this tank by two internal pumps, each with a capacity of 300 gallons per minute. It is thus possible to refuel two airplanes at a time in three to four minutes. The fuselage tank is located in the middle of the cargo area and is mounted on a cradle skid, which facilitates easy installation or removal. The tank is attached to its cradle by straps. The cradle, in turn, is secured by straps to the cargo deck. The plumbing from the pumps is routed through the aft fuselage tank cover and attached to the aerial refueling manifold. From here, it ties into the cross-feed manifold and the refueling hoses. Fuel for aerial refueling will normally be drawn from the fuselage tank. Or if the fuselage tank were emptied, fuel may be transferred from the wing tanks into the fuselage tank. Fuel can then be transferred to the receiver aircraft. It is more desirable to refuel from the fuselage tank because of the higher capacity of the fuselage pumps. It is also possible for fuel to be pumped from the fuselage tank to the cross-feed manifold for consumption by the GV engines. With the fuselage tank removed for assault transport mission, receiver aircraft can still receive fuel directly from any wing tank at reduced fuel flow. There are two aerial refueling pods under the wings. Outboard of the number one, and number four engines. They contain the hydraulically operated reels that hold the 96-foot refueling hoses. At the end of the hose is a drogue, which couples with the probe on the receiver aircraft. The drogue stowage tube serves as an enclosure for stowing the drogue, as well as a method for guiding the hose from the reel drum into the airstream. The hose is equipped with an ejection spring which serves to expel the drogue from the stowed position into the slipstream when the hose is being extended. The reception coupling within the drogue, just aft of the ejection spring, is the unit with which the receiver aircraft makes contact. The open end of the coupling's housing is cone-shaped to guide the entrance of the probe or mating nozzle of the receiver plane. There are three locking mechanisms to give a mechanical lock between the probe and the drogue during refueling. At this locking, a valve opens, allowing the fuel to flow when the receiver is within fueling range. The canopy becomes inflated when the hose is extended into the airstream, providing an aerodynamically stable target for the receiver plane. The aft end of the pod contains three lights to give the receiving airplane visual aid in following any phase of the refueling operation. The amber light is the tanker ready light. The green light indicates fuel flowing. And the red light means hydraulic pressure is not normal and gives warning that an engagement should not be attempted. The aerial refueling pods contain all the necessary hardware for the extension and retraction of the AR hoses. The hose is extended by means of the hydraulic motor in the reel. This motor is powered by the utility hydraulic system. The retraction and locking action also works within this system. The air refueling control panel regulates the functions of all the component parts of the aerial refueling complex. Let's check the steps to be taken on a typical aerial refueling operation. In preparing for aerial refueling, be sure the propeller anti-icing and all non-essential electrical and electronic equipment are not in operation. Alternator loading will not allow these systems to operate simultaneously with the AR pumps. The desired fuel can be scheduled both electrically and manually. After transposing pounds to gallons by use of the conversion table, 
Schedule on the fuel counter the quantity of fuel to be transferred. First, turn the power switch on. Then push the crank in and turn counterclockwise one full turn for each 1,000 gallons desired. Then actuate the fuel schedule reset switch and the dial will electrically count down until the desired setting is reached. If for any reason the electric switch is not functioning, push the crank in and turn clockwise. Each turn then equals 10 gallons on the counter. When the reel control power switch is placed in the on position, the hydraulic pressure off light and the stowed and locked light will illuminate. Next, Place the hydraulic pressure switch in the on position. The hydraulic pressure off light should go off. And a momentary drop of hydraulic pressure is noted on the utility hydraulic pressure indicator on the co-pilot's instrument panel. The trail position is selected on the reel control switch. The stowed and locked light will then go off. And the drogue will begin to extend. When it reaches the preset trail position, it will stop, and after five seconds, the tanker ready light will go on. Then turn the air refueling pumps to on, one at a time, at least five seconds apart, because of alternator loads. Do not operate either pump when fuselage tank is empty. The manifold fuel pressure should be approximately 110 PSI. When a plane approaches the tanker for refueling, its optimum closure rate to the drogue from a trail position is five to seven feet per second, or approximately a four knot differential in airspeed. After receiving permission, the receiver pilot will find that flying a trail position on the drogue will provide him with sufficient judgment for making the engagement. Contact should not be made unless the amber light is glowing in the pod. In the event radio contact is lost, the lower anti-collision light is turned off to indicate that the tanker is ready. As soon as the receiver aircraft engages the drogue and moves into the refueling range, five feet forward of the full trail position, the amber tanker ready light will go off and the green fuel flowing light will come on. The receiver aircraft should attempt to maintain a position to keep the hose from bowing. If anything, the plane should ride slightly high. The cone of operation is best found from the initial engagement point or above, but riding too high will result in a tendency for the receiver to pitch up due to wing wash. As the receiver aircraft takes on fuel, flight control response may become marginal or mushy since stall speed increases with gross weight. If at any time the receiver pilot feels that he requires additional airspeed to maintain proper position during refueling, he should notify the tanker to toboggan. The desired increased airspeed results from gradual descent of the tanker and the receiver while air refueling continues. When the scheduled quantity of fuel has been delivered, the fuel flowing light will go off. When the receiving plane moves out of refueling range, the tanker ready light will go on. Successful engagements have been made with many different types of aircraft. In fact, most any receiver capable of maintaining flight within the speed range of the GV-1 can be refueled. For example, the engagement by this A-4D is made without difficulty. No radio transmission is necessary during the refueling process, as the lights on the rear of the pod give all the instructions necessary. 
the amber tanker ready light is easily seen by the approaching pilot. When the receiver advances into the refueling range, the amber light goes off and the green light indicating fuel flow comes on. Two members of the crew act as observers at the paratroop doors just aft of the fuselage tank. From there, they keep the pilot informed via intercom of all actions of the refueling planes. When the scheduled amount of fuel has been transferred to the receiver plane, the green fuel flow light will go off as the valve in the hose closes and flow stops. Just prior to disconnect, the receiver should be as near to engagement position as possible to minimize hose whip at breakaway. The straighter the disconnect, the better. Optimum disengagement will cause the drogue to oscillate within a radius of 30 inches or less from the probe tip. If voice contact is permissible, the signal for disconnect is breakaway. Should voice contact be lost, turn the lower anti-collision light on for breakaway. The disengagement should follow immediately in the safest manner possible, and the receiver pilot then should await further instructions. Whenever the receiver plane completes its refueling and disengages, the hose and drogue are immediately ready for the next plane. As soon as the fuel counter or necessary tank transfers are set up, the next aerial refueling can take place. At the completion of the refueling operation, the crew chief turns the air refueling pump switches to off and places the real control switches to rewind. When the hoses start to rewind, the tanker ready light will go off. It takes approximately 17 seconds for the hose to reel in. When the drogue is in the stowage tube and locked, the stowed and locked light will come on. The hydraulic pressure switch is then turned to off and the hydraulic pressure off light will illuminate. The real fuel valve switch is placed in the closed position and the real control power switch in the off position. The hydraulic pressure off light and the stowed and locked light will go off. The real fuel valve switch is then placed in the auto position. In the event that the hydraulic pressure or the normal electric power to the hose reel is lost, the hose can still be extended. The emergency control switch is placed in the emergency trail position. And electric power from the emergency bus is directed to the emergency latch release solenoid in the pod. Do not extend drogues utilizing emergency trail above 160 knots indicated airspeed. When the latch releases the reel, the hose and drogue are thrust into the airstream with the help of the ejection spring. The aerodynamic load on the drogue continues extension of the hose to full trail position. Then refueling airspeeds can be resumed. Emergency engagement of the dead or no response hose is possible if proper technique is employed to avoid possible damage to the probe. At the completion of the refueling, however, it will not be possible to rewind the hose. In such an emergency, either of two procedures can be followed. The tanker can be flown back to its base and landed with the hoses trailing, with very little effect on the maneuverability of the aircraft. If the tanker is at maximum distance from base, the added drag factor of the extended hose will affect fuel consumption to the degree that it should be severed from the reel. This procedure is preferred and should be accomplished over a clear and uninhabited area. When the decision to jettison the hose is made, the severing is accomplished by use of the guillotine, which is located on the drogue stowage tube. The hose travels back and forth through the guillotine aperture. 
there are two explosive charges in the guillotine, either of which, when fired, causes the blade to sever the hose. When severed, both free ends of the hose are clamped, preventing fuel spillage. One clamp closes the hose that is attached to the drum and remains with the guillotine. The other clamps the hose still attached to the drogue and is jettisoned with it. To activate the guillotine, the real power switch is placed in the off position, the fuel valve switch in the close position, and the guard is raised and the guillotine switch placed in the cut position. If it becomes necessary to jettison fuel, dump from the fuselage tank first. The fuel flowing from the fuselage tank by means of the high capacity air refueling pumps is routed past the pods by opening the jettison valve to the fuel dump mast located at the wing tip. From there, it is jettisoned free of the aircraft. The programming on the air refueling control panel for fuel jettisoning consists of just three steps. Real control power switches to on. Air refueling pump to the emergency position. And after lifting jettison switch covers, jettison switches to jettison. Do not start both air refueling pumps simultaneously or jettison from the wing tanks at the same time as the fuselage tank because of high fuel pressures. Also, monitor alternator loads carefully. With a thorough understanding and knowledge of the aerial refueling system in the GV-1, successful refueling operations can be made without difficulty. Exact programming on the auxiliary control panel throughout the aerial refueling procedure proper trailing of the hose and drogue at the rendezvous, exercise of basic skills by the pilot of the refueling plane, correct disengagements and retraction of the hoses will assure a successful refueling flight. The model GV-1 airplane has proven to be an extremely stable refueling platform, well qualified to perform its required all-weather mission. <laughs>